Hi y'all, it's Mary and it is Thursday at one o'clock, which means it's time for a YouTube video. Let me be sure that we're doing our thing over here, just to be sure that we're going out onto the airwaves. It looks like we are, so I will shut off my sound. And it looks like we need to come back this way just a little bit. There we go. All right. I have got a fun fold card. It's a fun fold I've done for you before, but it's a good one still, so it's worth repeating, I think. And this one uses the amazingly wonderful Dragonfly Garden um, bundle, which also uh, includes the... Wait for it, and I'll get you all of the right words. Just one second. Just one second. Make sure I'm telling you the right thing here. It's entirely possible I'm not, because this, this is one of those days. You ever had one of those days where you weren't quite firing on all cylinders? Well, guess what? Okay. Yes, that's correct. This is the Dragonfly Bundle. Uh, hello. It's like I just started or something. Hey, Faith. Um, <clears throat> so this uses the Dragonfly Garden Bundle with the stamp sets, cling stamp set, and then you get the fun Dragonflies Punch With, where you get to punch the um, images that are in the stamp set and also some of the dragonflies in the Dandy Garden DSP, which is really pretty darn handy when you can just pull a printed dragonfly, punch it, and go. And I've actually done that on my card. I've used both the larger punch to punch out a DSP dragonfly and also the small punch to make a couple of cardstock ones. So this is a fun fold. It has a belly band like a gate card does. Hi Lenny, hi Barbara, hi Jerry, hi Glenda. And then this opens up like so. So it's a really good opportunity to show off some pretty designer paper, which there is plenty of in Dandy Garden, and gives you a lot of room to write. So let's go ahead and get started. This is easy. Um, all of the directions will be on my blog tomorrow with the card cuts, so you don't even need, oh, and of course, you know, hashtag no naked envelopes. You don't even need to keep your, um, you don't even need to write anything down. Don't even have to write anything down. <clears throat> okay, now on this one, I have used a color combination of Blackberry Bliss, Misty Moonlight, and Bumblebee, and I decided I wanted to uh, change it up just a little bit, and I'm going to use Calypso Coral, Mossy Meadow, and Bumblebee. All still colors in the Dandy Garden DSP. Remember, let Stampin' Up! do the work for you. Uh, they are very good at putting colors together. So even if you don't think a color ought to go with another color, my theory is if they're on the on the, in the DSP, then it's it's probably good to go. All right, so I have my card cuts already made, aren't you glad? And we're starting with a five and a half by 11 inch piece of Calypso Coral. And I'm going to take my Simply Scored board here and I'm going to pick up my stylus that I knocked on the floor. Now, we're gonna make three scores. We're gonna start at um, one and three quarters. The next one will be at five and a half. And then the third one will be at nine and three quarters. Okay, and that's pretty much all you're gonna need the scoreboard for. Why the dragonfly fill? Oh, because, okay, so there was a lot of question about that, but this is not so much a fill as kind of a watercolory painter effect. So you can actually just turn this around and it, it isn't designed to fill the wings. It's just designed to add kind of smudges of color, like very art, it's really artsy. Like, you know, some of the flower images that we have where we have a solid outline and then kind of a blob that is the fill and it goes out of the lines and it doesn't quite fit. So it's not so much a fill stamp as it is just a coloring artistic stamp. Does that make sense? Um, and it can also be used as a shadow under the wings. That's exactly right. If you had one popped up, like for example, you could I could pop this up and I could stamp that image on the cardstock underneath it and it would look like a shadow. Kind of fun, right? All right, so let's go ahead and do this. Now the hardest thing about doing these kinds of fun folds, not the hardest thing, the thing you want to take a little time with is making sure that you fold and score, and you do straight folds. 
You know, sometimes things don't score exactly perfectly, but you really want to try to line the edges up so that everything is straight. Okay? That's that's my big tip. Isn't that that is quite the big tip. Okay, and then this one goes the opposite direction. And we'll make sure it is straight as well. Okay. All right. So that is the fun fold, just like that. Now, I've got some bumblebee mats. I did use the same color mat as I did on my sample. And let's see. Hi, Catherine. Hi, Daryl. Appreciate you joining on a quick break. Catch the replay later. Okay, bye. <laughs> All right, this is for the inner liner. And then I've got a piece of the Dandy Garden in uh, Mossy Meadow. And let's go ahead and mat that on bumblebee. Hey, Amy. Appreciate you joining. And I'm going to just use some liquid glue here, like so. We'll just mat all of our DSPs right quick so that we can assemble our card. All right, then the, um, the small fold again has the same DSP. I like the symmetry of it, but you could certainly use three different DSP designs if you wanted. They all coordinate pretty darn well, so I just don't think you could make a mistake if you stay within the, I would probably stay within the DSP pack, but you know, go big or go home. You could go somewhere else with it. Definitely could. Three panels, pick, pick your, pick your papers. I was going to say pick your poison, but that didn't seem right somehow. Paper isn't poison. Paper is good. We like paper. Okay. All right, I love that paper with the dandelions on it. Okay, so let's go ahead and adhere these pieces to the card. This is our card front, we're going to call it. Like so. Now the next only tricky part of this is being sure that you put the DSP panels on the correct side. You know, like if you put it right here, it would be very pretty, but it wouldn't be your fun fold that you were looking for when you got ready. All right. And we'll put that like so. So I've found it does help if you put the card in the fold position. Assume the fold position. There we go. And then this one will be folded like so. Okay, so we'll put that on. And then we'll make us a, a inner liner and then we'll finish off the card by making our belly band. Okay, so there we go, like so, and we'll just kind of make sure everything is lined up, perfect, yeah, ooh, I like that with the Calypso Coral and the Bumblebee and Mothy Meadow, it's very pretty. Okay, now on the inside, all I'm going to do is stamp this beautiful image. I tell you what, this has to be one of my favorite wildflower images ever. I, I hope it's around for a really, really, really long time. I know, D dandelions in the yard, bad thing. Dandelions on paper, really good thing. Yes, I understand. I understand completely. Okay. So I'm just gonna stamp this on the bottom. Re-ink and stamp next to it. And put that aside. And we're going to use Calypso Coral for the little dragonfly swarm. It's a little swarm of dragonflies, pretty sure it is. And it does have an up and a down. Did you see that? That would be down. This is the dive bombing dragonflies. This is the flitting around dragonflies. So, you know, pick which dragonflies you want. You want flitting or dive bombing. Dive bombing might be appropriate at certain times of the year, but we're going to make them flitting. Okay, there we go. So I'm gonna set that aside for just a second while I close up my ink because I don't want to make a mistake and stick my hand in it. Not that I would ever do that. <laughs> she said, never. Okay, now we'll mat this on our bumblebee and put it inside our card, and then we can play with our belly band. Our belly band. Our band de belly. Uh-huh, okay, here we go. 
This is kind of a fun day for me because I get to do this one and then I've added another Zoom the classroom or craft room, not classroom, craft room at seven o'clock tonight. So now I'll be doing two a week, which is fun. Two o'clock on Mondays, seven o'clock on Thursdays. That's all Eastern time. So if you're a customer of mine or one of my team, then um, you should have the link. And if, if you don't have the link for tonight, but you're a customer and you know you should, and you'd like it, just drop me a line and I will be happy to provide it. Okay. There we go. And that is all we're going to do for the inner liner. I'm leaving it blank sentiment wise. Okay. Alrighty. Now for our belly band, I have a one inch piece of, I use the same color as my uh, card base. So in this case, it's Calypso Coral. And what you want to do is you want to start it in the middle of your fold and then you just kind of want to gently wrap it around. Don't make, this is not the space shuttle people. It needs to be a little bit relaxed, a little bit easy breezy, because otherwise you're going to end up with a belly band that you can't get on and off very easily and your recipient can't get it on and off very easy and it's going to cause them to maybe even say bad words. We don't know. Now I started with an 11 inch piece. I'm just going to trim off a little bit of the end there. Okay, so let it relax. Let it relax. Om, om. And then we're just going to use a little bit of liquid glue here. And I'm going to make, all I really want to do is be sure it's straight, which means if you line up the edges of the band, your belly band ought to be pretty straight. And it's, you want it to be, I, I want to even go with kind of loose-ish, okay? Loose-ish is better than tight-ish. I'm just throwing that out there. Okay, so now it can sit for a second and dry. Before you came, I took a piece of Whisper White and I cut the Make It Like Your Stretchy Pants, Not Your Jeans. Exactly. And the way some people paint their jeans on, definitely not like that. Okay, so I've cut a stitched rectangle and I used the third from the smallest. Okay, so, well, or second from the smallest or third smallest, depending on how you look at it. It's that one right there, okay? I cut a piece of Whisper White, and at the same time that I was cutting it, I was using one of the new Stitched with Whimsy dies, not upside down, in the middle of the die, and then I just ran it through my cutter, okay? And it came out all embossified like that. Isn't that so fun? Yeah. The answer you're looking for is, oh yes, Mary, it is so fun. Okay, now, here we go. I'm going to stamp, thank you for your kindness, in Mossy Meadow. And remember my tip, whenever you're using one of these cling stamps with the sticker, I always like to do a test stamp to be sure that if I line the printed image up that I'm going to get it where I think I am. Here's the thing. These stamps are only as true as, one, how good the engraving of the image is on the rubber, which you have no control over, and two, how good a job you did putting the sticker on, which, you know, you have limited control over. There's only so much you can do. All right, so we're going to ink that up. I'm going to pull this to me just a second. I apologize if it's out of camera range, but I do want to try to get it kind of straight. And then just hold it a beat. Don't rock. Do not rock, Mary. Don't rock. Hey, Kathy. And there we go. Thank you for your kindness. All right. Now, over the top, I am going to stamp that wildflower image. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do, because that's kind of a not the darkest image in the world. I'm going to do a test. See where I did it on my grid paper? I'm going to stamp that over the top and see if it's still legible. And I'm going to go with yes. Okay, so I'm not going to stamp off. I'm just going to stamp. Like that. Okay, just like that. And one more. There. Okay. And we can set that aside now until we're ready to do our envelope. 
I wish all sentiment stamps were photopolymer. I know. I kind of agree with you. I like to be able to see the sentiments. Okay, so what we're going to do, this is going to be on our, this is my sample. So I should probably work off of this card, just saying. This is going to set in the middle, and then I'm going to put a couple of little dragon flies on the top of it. Okay, so let's go ahead and adhere it to our belly band with some liquid glue. Liquid glue. If I was stranded on a desert island and you could only have one adhesive, that is the one I would pick. Liquid glue. And I know you all would expect me to say dimensionals, but work with me here. With liquid glue, I could create dimensionals by stacking little tiny pieces of cardstock together. But without liquid glue, if all I had was dimensionals, then I would have a hard time making a card. So liquid glue is absolutely my adhesive of choice. All right, so we'll let that set for a second. Now, <clears throat> I cut out a dragonfly, and this one's going to be one I want to show you a little trick on. When you're doing the DSP, if I just, for example, stamped, let's just say I was stamping that, that Calypso Coral one, which of course I wouldn't because it's only part way. But you can see I'm also stamping the rest of the DSP. And depending on where I'm at, I might not want to do that. So if you cut the dragonfly in question out, then you'll be ready to go without marring the rest of your DSP. What that does though, is it can make it hard to stick it inside your punch. So take a sticky note. The crafter's very best friend is the sticky note, just so you know. In case you were wondering what the crafter's best friend is, it's your reverse tweezers and the sticky note. And then we're just gonna slide this in like so. And this is one of the Calypso coral ones. And I need to cut that off just a little bit. You may have to play with the uh, with your cut, and that's okay. We are nothing if not paper players, right? <clears throat> hey, Steph, appreciate you joining. Glue dots, you're the glue dot lady, eh? Okay, I'll take glue dots. They're pretty good too, but liquid glue is my is my favorite. Okay, so I'm just gonna line that up and punch him out like so. And then while I'm holding this in my hand, cause gosh, I wouldn't wanna put it down and you know pick it back up. I'm going to stamp a couple of little Calypso coral guys like a so. And then we can put him away. And I'm gonna turn these guys over and brush them with my clear wink of Stella brush, just to give them a little shine, because you know dragonflies shine, don't they? I'm pretty sure they do. Pretty sure they do. All right. So while those are kind of getting dry, I'm going to give my dragonflies wings a little curl might even get my bone folder to give them a little more curl, like so. And done. Here comes the liquid glue. I know, it is a great sweet faith. It really, really is. I'm just going to put some liquid glue on his body. And then I'm going to pick up my tweezers because that makes my life easier. There we go. And we're going to adhere him right there and then we'll just let him sit and think for a minute and we'll curl these little guys a little bit put a little on their bodies and here we go that one is kind of flitting downward We'll slide him there like that. Okay. And then the last one to go on. Here we go. Hey, Christine. Appreciate you joining. We'll put this little guy down here. Like that. 
Okay. And that's the card right there. So I'm going to let this set for just a second. Let me make a um, envelope. Put this away. And I'm going to stamp my beautiful, beautiful wildflower image on the front of said envelope. Thank you, Kathy. Thanks, Paula. Where did I get my tweezers? Where all good things that aren't Stampin' Up! come from? Amazon. They're EK Tools. And I love them very, very much. In fact, it's gotten to where I can hardly, I can hardly craft without them. If there was a worldwide reversible tweezers shortage, I would be in trouble. I wouldn't be hoarding toilet paper. I'd be hoarding reversible tweezers. Okay. Now it would appear that I did not get a piece of DSP for my envelope flap. So let me see what I can find over here. Let's see if I have any more of... There it is. There's some. We'll take that one if that has. To, if that's the only one I have. Let me see. I don't think I have enough up here. Nope. Let's see what the other side of that is. Hang on a second, guys. Sorry. Really well prepared. Yes. And there was Mary, ever so well prepared, by which to say not even a little bit. Well, I may be down. Guess what needs to be on my next order? Yeah, that's right. Dandy Garden DSP. All right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to use some of, some of, some of, not that, not that. Here, we'll use this one. That'll work right there, just like that. That'll work right there. Yeah. Okay. And then we'll put some liquid glue. And, okay. Don't forget your envelopes, people. This is your first impression, right? This is the first thing your recipient sees. And you want it to be kind of a, kind of a, hey, guess what's on the inside? And we're going to put some, well, that dries. It doesn't need to dry, but I almost forgot to put my little swarm on. And I don't want to forget my swarm. My swarm's the cutest thing ever. My little swarm. My little swarm. There we go. Oh, I like them in cliffs of coral. They really pop. They pop so big. Okay. Now we'll give this a quick fussy cut. And our card will be done. I really like to try to make the fronts of my envelopes reflect the inside of my cards when I can do that. It doesn't always work out, but I try. And in this case, I think it succeeded. So there's our front with our easy peasy, only three extra, really only three extra scores and the inside. So you can see it all ties together. It looks just like it was meant to be. And because I used my stretchy pants, not my painted on jeans, my uh, belly band goes on and off with ease. All right. All right, guys. Well, I appreciate you spending some time. I'll see some of you this evening, I hope, at seven o'clock on my Zoom, the craft room. And uh, hopefully you'll be back on Saturday at 7 p.m. for my Facebook Live tutorial. Thank you all. Have a great rest of your week. Bye-bye.